Do you guys like delicious craft beer? Well, we are going to Dover's only craft brewery. My, uh, my old place of employment, actually. This destination today is taking us to Fordham and Dominion. And it's, uh, like I said, it's Dover's only brewery. And it's uh, amazing craft beer. Uh, we're gonna go do a quick tour. Well, let's go. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. go. All right, so a little little bit about the Fordham and Dominion Brewery. It started out as just Fordham, and you notice when we get there, it only has Fordham at the top, because originally, uh, when this location was set up, it was just Fordham. Now, Fordham started out, I mean, you could take the name all the way back to 1703, when Benjamin Fordham was granted a charter by Queen Anne to brew beer in the port city of Annapolis. And this is obviously before the United States. So the name goes way back. And if you want to say who has the, what's the oldest name brewery in the nation? Nobody beats 1703. And they, when they were started brewing beer uh, in 1995, and they were looking for a name, they revived that, that history of Annapolis. So there you got your Fordham. Now, uh, again, they started brewing in 95. They removed the roof of the Ram's Head Tavern in Annapolis, lowered in their brew house, and began brewing beer. And it was quite popular, because this was the height of the craft beer revolution. And, you know, that something that's that good takes off. Ah, gorgeous. Okay, back to the story. Squirrel. Uh, by the early 2000s, the owner knew they needed to start looking at expanding outside of Annapolis. Because if you've ever been to Annapolis, in Old Town Annapolis, there's nowhere to expand there. It's all packed. It's, it's, it's crowded. Dover popped up, and, and it's a great location because in Delmarva, you're centrally located. Um, you have D.C. and Baltimore to the west and northwest, and uh, Philadelphia to the north. And, and it's, so it's great for distribution, but it's also good, I'm sure, for tax purposes. So uh, he did find this location where we're going to now, and it was just a big open warehouse, a 25,000 square foot warehouse, and there was nothing in it. So, um, but he uh, went, looked around, he found a brewery that had closed up out in, I believe, Fresno, and uh, took about 18 truckloads. They dumped them on the front lawn, and they built this thing uh, pretty much from the ground up. Now, as you're coming from the south, um, you're going to pass Dover Air Force Base because a brewery is located just north of Dover Air Force Base. If you get on Horse Pond Road and you keep an eye out, you're going to find it. But it's on McD Drive because it's in the McDaniels Business Park. But as you're approaching, if you're coming up from Route 1 or coming down on Route 1, you will see the blue uh, attraction sign and you will see the Fordham and Dominion sign on those um, under attractions. So it's pretty good to be on a, a sign when you have McDonald's and Burger King and IHOP. And then we have attraction Fordham and Dominion Brewery and Harvest Ridge Winery. Also a great place to visit. We'll have to get out there sometime. But interesting story about these signs. To get on those signs, you have to be within 15 miles of that sign. And Harvest Ridge Winery's sign up here, where you have your left turn to go to the winery, says 14.9 miles. Yeah, 14.9 miles. That, I mean, as a crow flies, maybe, it's, that thing's almost the, right on the state line. It's literally, I think, part of the winery's in Maryland. So uh, kind of interesting that uh, they just made the sign. But 2.1 miles from here to Fordham. Now back to the name. Uh, the Old Dominion went up for sale in 2007, and Fordham bought them. Um, in about and in 2009, they moved all the brewing operations uh, to this location. So that's where the Dominion name comes from. It was Old Dominion. They dropped the old and made it Fordham and Dominion. So we're coming up to Lafferty Lane, right here where the Mako is, and that's where you're going to make your right. Now you'll see the sign right there. It has the arrow for Fordham and Dominion. something else about this location is it is in an industrial park 
like a lot of breweries, um, it's, that's, that's the preferred place to be for distribution. You want trucks in and out, and you don't want to go in the middle of a town. Now, some of the smaller breweries um, that you find in towns only make beer pretty much for their location. Maybe some ca they can for grab-and-go, but um, they're not real big into distribution, and they generally have food. Well, this location, because it is in an industrial park, does not have food. I know occasionally you'll get food trucks, and that, that's kind of handy on, on weekends. Um, but for the most part, you're not going to get food. But there's also an advantage to that because it's pet friendly. You can actually have pets in here. Now also, this is a Harvest Host location. So that's kind of convenient too if you're uh, an RVer and you're a member of Harvest Host. Uh, you can do overnight stays and that's that's a huge advantage because you can go enjoy some fine craft beer and you don't have to worry about driving afterwards you can go go out in your RV and have a nap or sleep to spend the night and drive safe the next day so I think everybody should promote those locations all right, so we are approaching Fordham and Dominion. You'll notice uh, Dover Behavioral Health is over here. They do some inpatient, uh, you know, behavioral health type of stuff. Now, which brings me to an interesting story because we had a brewer one time had come in and uh, they start. They used to start about four, three or four in the morning, and uh, just get the first batch going. And they generally didn't lock the door, so uh, he's he's up in the brew house and he's starting to brew. And he looks down and there's a guy standing down the bottom of the stairs in a gown. He's like, uh, can I help you? And he, I guess the guy wanted a, an application. But uh, cops came in and got him. But yeah, he escaped from across the street there. Pretty crazy. All right. We're going to roll on up here. I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, you know, just some scenery around here. Show you the outside. Uh, maybe a little bit of shots of the inside. And then we're going to go for a brew tour. start over here where the process begins now if you noticed outside there were two large white grain silos those are full of two row barley and that enters through this PVC pipe right up top here now that'll come in up top here there's a mixer up top they're gonna build a pallet of malts they're gonna cut those malts open they'll go into the mixer with that two row barley um, that's gonna come into the hopper right here and then after it gets to the specific weight that they'll set in, depending on the recipe or what they're brewing, um, that's going to get augered across to the first section of the brew house. Now this is a four-stage brew house. You have the mash mixer, the lauder ton, the brew kettle, and the whirlpool tank. Now I don't want to get too involved in the brewing process. Um, each stage has its own specific purpose. Uh, obviously the mash mixers for mashing in the Lauderton has these large rakes inside and those rakes are going to spin around and get all the flavors uh, out of those grains and the malts it's also where they're going to separate the solids from the liquids then of course you have the brew kettle and the whirlpool tank also there's these two large filters down below all the water that comes in is double filtered after the beer is done with the brew house you don't have alcohol yet. You just have wort or basically beer flavored water. That's good to go into one of these fermenters. Now this, this place does have 2,400 barrels worth of fermentation space. Uh, most of the fermenters are these 100 barrel fermenters. There are some 50 barrel fermenters uh, in the middle towards the back. And then there's these large 200 barrel fermenters on the far side. Now to talk a little bit about the fermenting. Um, after that wort gets put into one of these, uh, depending on the beer that's being made, um, different types of yeast are used. Now there's two main types of yeast. There's ale yeast and lager yeast. They do make both here. Now ales are what you typically see in smaller breweries. Uh, they do ferment quite a bit faster. Um, you can make a, an ale 
uh, from the beginning to end in just about two weeks. Um, they, so they only really take about a little over a week for fermentation. But lagers can take up to a month. They, most of those beers will take up to a month to produce because they do take quite a bit longer. Um, some can even go longer than that. So there's the big difference. And, and lagers ferment at the bottom of the tank in cool temperatures of about 55 degrees, where ales ferment at the top of the tank in warmer temperatures of about 65 to 68 degrees. Now this, this little guy right here is R2 Hop 2. And he is the dry hopper. And he does exactly what that means. You put the dry hops, they're almost, they're in a pellet form. They'll be put inside and then it's filtered through during the fermentation stage to get that extra hop into the beer. I believe they also use this to put some vanilla bean in to filter uh, for their oak barrel stout. Now, as we come across over here, this is basically a large syrup mixer. And what I didn't mention before coming in is they make four amazing sodas. Currently, they have two in stock, but they make a creamy orange, a ginger ale, black cherry, and probably the most famous is the root beer. If you go to Google and you put in best soda by state, for Delaware, it's Dominion root beer. But yeah, so the water jets in through here. They are gonna put a 2,000 pound bag of sugar. They're gonna forklift that above here. It's gonna filter in through that, that, uh, that kind of square top right there and that's basically gonna make your pure sugarcane syrup. And that's what's used as the base for their sodas. Well, I talked about the malts and how they mix those upstairs uh, at the mixer. These are where they're gonna grab their malts from. And then they see they're getting ready to make a batch up top right now. And that's where they forklift them up and they'll be taken back to the mixer. As you can see, uh, a, a majority of these malts are these Weimarin malts they're from Bamberg Germany so to get those flavors you really need to go to the source so if you want a true German style beer um, so you gotta like I said you gotta go to the source there's some crisp malts up there I believe those come from like Wisconsin um, but then there's some Simpson malts it's for those like UK style ales uh, there's your Simpson malts now while the malts do come from say you know the UK and Germany this bottling machine came from Italy which can offer some challenges when you need parts because they're, they're in their, their language, so to speak. But, you know, the metric system. Um, except for the GRX here. This is the bottle feeder. Now, as the bottles come in, they're going to take a pallet like that. There's a pallet back there. They're going to open the double doors on the front of this. They go inside, and that will lift each row up and feed the bottles through the bottling line. Now, as the bottles come through, they're going to get kind of cleaned or washed just in case there's any debris during production. This is going to shoot CO2 to expel any excess moisture and also fill the product. Then you have the crowner right here. That's basically the bottle capper. Then it goes through like a wash, a wash system. There's like a, almost a car wash that goes through. That'll wash the bottle. As they come around, they'll go through a dryer and then they'll come around to be labeled. And this is the front labels will go on here, the rear labels over here. Now you have a clean, full product bottle that's labeled, and then this is going to put spray the born on date uh, or expiration date, depending on the product that's being made. And that's gonna go right through here. You can see the yellow paint. Obviously the yellow is gonna show up better on those dark brown bottles. And then that's put into that machine there. Now as they come down, this is going to be a final case is going to stop these little hands are going to stop the bottles. You're going to have a full case here. They're going to release, come down. These little fingers are going to guide them into their slots on the case or the bottles. So while this is all happening, that's the combi over there. there this is going to assemble the cases, put the six pack containers in, and then they're going to come around under the conveyor belt ready to receive the product. Now you have a full case. It goes up here. This is basically like a glue gun machine. It's going to seal the boxes shut. Once they're palletized, they get put or put onto the pallet. They are shrink wrapped and this is the shrink wrap machine. They'll get this started. They just press a button. This base spins while that track with the saran wrap goes basically up and down to cover that, to wrap that pallet. Then it's brought back over here to get prepared for shipping out. You can see some product back here. Right now, this is the time of year for cherry blossom. And that's probably one of the most sought after beers this time of year. 
those large tanks are actually bright tanks. Now the bright tanks are the last stage of making beer. That's where you're gonna get your carbonation, uh, bring the beer down to temperature, and then it will get put into either the kegging machine, the canning, or the bottling line. And this is the kegging machine. This is the clean and sanitation port, and then of course that's the fill side. They're gonna get put down here, They'll go down the conveyor belt and get palletized and put into the cooler, which is our next and last stop. And this is where the kegs are stored. Also what they stored here are the hops for all that beer that they make. So the hops are basically a flower or a bud. And just like you'd go to a flower shop and get your flowers out of a cooler, uh, they want to keep them cool and moist, so they are left in their bags, sealed and cool, kept cool in here. Now it's time to go pick up some beer and ride on out of here. All right. Well, I got my Doppelbach, and it's time to head on home. Appreciate you guys sticking around this long. Get a chance, come on out to Fordham and Dominion. Time for me to get this beer home and get this thing posted so you guys can watch. All right, have a good weekend and stay safe. Peace.